Today we're going to be going through a full body strength and mobility flow together. So we'll get all the joints moving through their full ranges and there'll be lots of strength movements sprinkled in as well as lots of great balance and coordination work. So you don't need anything in particular for the practice today, just your mat and a wide open space. If you like to pad your knees with a blanket or a pillow or towel or anything, you can have that. And if you usually practice with blocks, I would have those handy for sure. But if you don't have yoga blocks at home, they're not, they're not required, okay? Uh, sometimes you can use hardcover books um, if you don't have yoga blocks at home but want a little bit extra support, okay? So we are going to go ahead and get started on our backs. And just make your way down. Allow yourself to get comfortable maybe you like to pat the head or something and we're going to start with the arms out nice and wide in a t and let the arms relax down on the floor and you can take the feet pretty wide like mat width apart and start to drop your knees over to one side and then over to the other side so we're starting out here today with some windshield wipers um, as you drop the knees to the right you can turn your head and look to the left and then as you let the knees fall over to the left, your head can look to the right. So we'll get a little oppositional movement going, get a little movement in the neck. And I just want you to take this time to drop into the body, take inventory, notice any areas of tension or tightness. You might check in with the low back and the hips, just kind of Check in with how you're feeling. You might be really reaching out energetically through the fingertips, getting some nice length on in the arms. Great. And then you can walk your feet in just a bit. So they're still about, they're still wide, but they're probably like hips width distance apart now. Relax the arms down and you're gonna start to lift the hips up into a bridge and then take your time and roll the spine down. So see if you can start to explore some incremental or rolling bridges here. The feet are glued to your mat, big toe mound, little toe mound, heel are anchored down and you're rolling the spine up and then rolling the spine down. Thinking one vertebrae at a time. And then the next time that you roll up, we're going to pause, okay? Find a height that works okay for you that feels like you could be here for a bit. So you don't necessarily have to be up as high as you possibly could, right? You can be any amount lifted off the floor here, okay? Then you're gonna take your right arm up and cross it over your body and reach it behind you towards like 10 o'clock if you were reaching um, back and then Reverse it, relax the right arm down, and now turn and rotate, reach the left arm up and back towards more like two o'clock. So what we've just done is added a rotation to our bridges, okay? So you're rotating to one side, coming back, and then reaching up and rotating to the other. Okay, if this is bothering you or it doesn't feel okay, you can keep, do it with the hips down and just make it like more of a reach with the hips down, right? But if you're okay here, see if you can keep the hips up, manage the weight difference in the feet as you go side to side and see how your body does with these rotations. And then go ahead, we'll settle the hips down on the mat, draw the knees nice and wide towards the armpits and then draw the knees together. You can move through that a few times, checking in with the low back and the hips, opening them nice and wide, and then drawing them together. And then from here, you're gonna park the knees um, over the hips to start, and we'll go ahead and flex and point the ankles a few times, all right? Arms can just be resting down either by your sides or I'm in a T, but I want you to see if you can find your low back, eat somewhere between um, smashing it into the floor and arched off the floor, somewhere between those two places, right? So you're not smashing it, but it's not arched, okay? So that's hopefully gonna start to get those belly muscles to light, uh, to light up and then we're just flexing and pointing the ankles a few times. Great. 
From here, ankles are flexed, toes are pulling towards you, and you're going to start to open your legs up so you're in more of a frog shape. And we're going to pause here and imagine that you, if you had your hands on the outer edges of your legs, you were pushing your legs outwards into your hands, or like you were thinking about trying to get your knees all the way towards the floor. Okay, but keep your ankles in line with your knees. And then you're just holding and breathing in this isometric. See what you feel maybe in those outer hip muscles. And then start to draw your legs all the way together. Now you're gonna push your inner thighs, knees, and feet in towards each other. And they're hugging in. You're gonna feel more of your inner thighs working now. Okay, see how that goes. Take a few breaths. And then we'll open back up, press the outer edges of the legs down towards the floor. See what you feel in the hips. Try to press evenly with both sides. And then one more time, they draw together, push the inner thighs in towards each other. See if you can make that connection with the inner thighs. And then go ahead, draw the knees towards the chest, and this time we're circling the knees. So starting to lubricate the hip joint a bit. Thinking kind of like low back massage here, and then you can reverse directions. And then go ahead, roll over to one of your sides, and we're going to transition into our tabletop shape. So if um, you, this is a great opportunity if you like to pad your knees or you're on hard floor, you can pad your knees. My mat, I have two mats, so they're doubled up, so I'm okay here. So we'll start out with some of our rock backs here. So you can rock your hips back towards your heels and then rock the hips forward, okay? And so just want you to see how that's feeling today. Check in with wrists, shoulders, hips backs of knees, even ankles. Maybe you do a few with the toes tucked under. That'll give you a little bit more of a toe stretch. And then we'll rock forward. Now you're going to reach the right arm forward like you're going to shake someone's hand. Okay, so push the floor away from you with that left hand and really reach the right arm forward. Now you're going to take that right hand and bring it in between your legs and reach back towards the bottom of your left foot, okay? And then come forward, reach the arm forward. So we've just kind of um, changed our rock back variation, made it single arm, okay? And then added a reach back, okay? So you might reach the bottom of that left foot. You might not. It doesn't really matter, okay? Just reach in that direction and see how this feels. Okay, so really reach out through these right fingertips and then reach back through uh, towards that left foot. We'll do one more. And then go ahead, lower down onto your forearms, but we'll spin the palms up to face the ceiling so you're in a supinated position. Let the head sink towards your mat like a bobblehead, okay? And just see how that goes. Like, are you able to release the tension and relax the head completely? You might even like scrunch the face a bit a few times. This is a great place to stretch out the face, get some of those muscles there. Good. Now, lift the head back up in line with the spine. Okay, so you're dropping the head, letting it relax, and then try to lift it back up in line with the spine. See if you can move through that a few times. We're not sinking towards the floor with our rib cage. The rib cage is moving towards the ceiling the whole time, but it's the head that's dropping and then pulling back up, okay? So it's the back of the neck muscles that are doing lots of work. Now we're pulling the head back up in, the li in line with the spine. We'll pause here. We're going to move through some cat cows in this shape. So you're gonna round your spine as much as you can, flex through the mid back, and then you see if you can arch through the spine a bit, stick your butt up, and look up towards the ceiling, okay? So a little bit of a different shape to, to move through in our, for our cat cows here. And just kind of see how it feels for you. You can make them as dramatic or as subtle as you would like. 
palms are still facing up towards the ceiling. You can maybe move through like one or two more. And then spin your palms back onto your mat. We'll lift the elbows up, bring the hands right back underneath the shoulders. Our toes are tucked. We're lifting the knees up into a bit of a hover. And then you're just rocking your hips back towards the heels and propelling yourself forward. So they're not, it's not a huge dramatic movement, but you're just kind of gently rocking back and forth. Try to keep the head nice and in line with the spine if possible. See what you feel. You can always drop the knees down anytime if you need a little bit of a rest. And then we will settle the knees down, untuck the toes, rock your hips back to a child's pose. I'm gonna round the spine here and just gently push the hands down into the floor to get a bit of an armpit stretch. But if you wanna take a different child's pose variation here, you totally can. I'm just gonna use this as a bit of a reset. Sometimes it's nice to sway side to side. Sometimes it's nice to stay still. Kind of check in, see what your body needs and then we'll rock forward. And now you're gonna reach the left arm forward. Make sure you're pushing the floor away from you with this right hand. Really extend out forward through those fingertips. Now you take the left arm, you reach it in between the legs. As you sit your hips back, you reach towards the bottom of that right foot, and then go ahead, reach the arm forward. Good, so see if you can rock back and forth a few times. So we're loading this right arm when we come forward. And then we're reaching back, trying to touch the bottom of that right foot when you lean back. Stay with your breath. Great. And then you'll plant the left hand down. We're curling the toes under, lifting the knees. Now see if you can set your hips back towards your heels, get some nice length on your spine, and then start to reach your hips all the way up and back towards your downward dog. Feel free to pedal the feet, um, or maybe you just like to hold this in a more static position and breathe. But just see if you can check in and see how your body's feeling at this point in your practice. You're feeling like you're getting nice and warmed up. What are you noticing in the backs of the legs, the calves, the feet, right? See so if you can have your gaze right in between the ankles. And then when you're ready, you're gonna see if you can play with lifting your left hand off your mat or at least lightening the amount of weight you have in it. So we're loading the right hand more than the left. Whether you're lifting it up or not is up to you. And then you'll drop the left hand down and play with lifting the right hand. And again, you might just put more weight in the left hand and almost lift the right, or you might actually lift the right. See if you can alternate and go back and forth here, managing the change um, in load as you lift a hand. Nice job. We're going to rock forward now to a high plank. You'll probably need to scoot the feet back and take a moment to try to pull the hands towards the feet and take a few breaths. Okay, head stays right in line with spine. And then knees are gonna tap down. This is a little different. Keep your knees on the floor and just start to bend your elbows a little bit any amount that you think you can hold, okay? So you don't wanna necessarily lower all the way to the floor because we're gonna hold for a few breaths. So just bend those elbows a little bit. Try not to let them splay out to the side. Try to keep them a little closer to the body and just see what you feel, see what you notice, right? Holding an isometric like this can sometimes be uh, quite interesting for our upper body and our core. Okay, it's also really great for the elbows to get all the muscles working around that elbow joint here. And then when you're ready, see if you can just push up out of it. We'll rock the hips back one more time. Any child's pose variation that's going to feel good to you. I'm going to make a pillow for my forehead, but you might keep the arms forward or rest them by your feet. See what feels right to you. And then we're sweeping the arm forwards forward, moving into table. We tuck the toes, lift the knees, rock the hips up and back into our downward facing dog. Okay, take a moment here, really extend back through your hips. 
and then we rock forward to a high plank. We drop our left knee to the floor and lift the right foot one inch. And then you're gonna rotate your hip, knee, and foot away from your left leg and then rotate towards your left leg. So we're moving through this screwdriver like motion with this right leg. Okay, and just kind of see how your body responds, see how it feels for you. And then you're gonna go ahead and step this right foot forward in between your hands, however you can get it there. And some of you, if you use your blocks, this might be an opportunity to set the blocks up on either side of this right foot, okay? We're gonna start with the hands on top of the right thigh, and you're gonna drive your knee forward and then pull it back. And my torso is leaning a little forward, right, to, to rest my hands on the thigh. And then we're working on our dorsiflexion flexion here. So knee drives forward, and then you pull it back and just see how that goes. Great. Now the next time you drive the knee forward, you're gonna pause, okay? See if you can maybe tuck under a little bit in the pelvis, a little posterior tilt. Arms come out to a T and then you're circling the arms. Okay, you can pick either direction because we're gonna go in both. And you can pick the pace. So if you really wanna take it up a notch, you might start to circle a little more rapidly. If you're okay and content with slower circles, you can stick uh, stick with those. But we're definitely gonna feel lots of great work in this leg. And then go ahead, reverse your direction. Nice job. And then go ahead, take your hands down to your blocks or the mat, whichever one um, you like to use. And then we tuck our back toes under, lift our back knee up. And then you're gonna start to bend your back knee and sit your hips back as you try to peel the bottom of your right foot up, the toes come towards your head, and then rock forward, drive the right knee forward. So you rock back, you're moving the front leg towards straight. I can't get mine all the way straight and keep my torso on it, so you might be able to, right? But the back knee moves towards bend as the front leg moves towards straight, and then when you rock forward, the front knee bends, the back leg straightens. Okay, so it's a little bit of a coordination challenge, but see if you can find the movement in a way that feels fluid and smooth, gets you a nice hamstring stretch, but try to keep the torso glued to that leg. Great, the next movement we got two options. Option one is to keep your hands on your blocks and drop your back knee and lift your back knee like this, okay? Option two is to climb up your leg, bring your hands on top of this thigh and drop your back knee and lift your back knee. Okay, so play with either of those options. If you wanted even more of a challenge, you could take your arms out to a T here and go no arms, no support, but that's a lot more of a challenge, okay? So either, I know I said two options, but I guess there is three. Pick any of those options and they'll be great for you. See if you can do two or three more. And then we're gonna settle this back knee down, plant the hands back down, and then extend this right leg all the way back. And if your hands were on blocks, I'm gonna bring them back to the floor. And now with this right leg behind you, I want you to see if you can pivot and drop the right foot to the floor and bring your left hand so it's in line with your left knee. So my left hand, my left knee, my left foot, and now my right foot are all in a line and I'm rotating my body and reaching my right arm up, okay? Little bit of a balance challenge. If you need more support, take this leg behind you and make a kickstand, okay? But if you're okay here with the balance challenge, you can keep the foot in line. Now, push into your right foot as much as you can, okay? And then all you're gonna do is turn your head, look at your bottom hand, and then turn your head, look at your top hand. Turn the head, look at the bottom hand, and then turn the head, look at the top hand. We'll do one more. And then we're gonna turn back onto our mat, bring the right knee in to meet the left, and then walk the hands in towards the knees. You can roll your spine up to a tall kneeling and do a little bit of a swirling motion here to ring out the movement, take a bit of a reset, okay? Get the rib cage moving a little more dynamically around the pelvis. Maybe you need to shake out the arms a bit. 
and then you're gonna plant your hands back down on your mat, tuck those toes under, lift the knees, rock the hips up and back, we're back in our downward facing dog, and then you're gonna walk your feet towards your hands at the top of the mat, root down through your feet, you can bend the knees as much as you need to, think rag doll here, and start to roll your spine on up, incrementally, and then once you arrive, take a moment, pause, try to find a place that feels centered in between those two feet. We're gonna sweep the arms up nice and tall to frame the ears, and then side bend to your right and shift your hips to the left. Keep reaching out through those left fingers as you shift your hips to the left, and then sideways pulls you up, and over now you lean to your left and then shift your hips to the right. And you're thinking about lengthening your right fingertips as far away from your right foot as possible. Take a breath or two. And then we slowly come on up. Now you're gonna reach your arms forward and sit your hips back into a bit of a chair squat. But it's like half hinge, half squat. So I am bending the knees like a squat and I'm hinging my hips back a bit too, so it's both. And then you're gonna pull your elbows in by your sides and then reach the arms forward. So you're kind of doing like a row here. You pull the elbows in and then reach the arms forward. And see how that goes. A few times, see if you can stay with your Smooth breaths. And then you're gonna start to shift your weight over to your left foot and then over to your right foot. A few times you can just keep the elbows in by your sides. So we're just swaying the weight, exploring the bottoms of the feet a bit. The next time that you go over to the left foot, you're going to pause. Option one is to come onto your right tiptoe. Option two is to lift the right foot off the floor. And then we're gonna go back to those rows, right? So it's a reach forward and a row. You decide you can keep the right toe on the mat or you can um, lift it up off the floor, okay? Totally up to you. One will challenge the balance a little more, but both will really work on this single leg strength situation, <laughs> okay? Great. And then plant your right foot down, shift the weight over to the right. Option one is to be on your right tiptoe really loading the right leg, or option two is to lift the foot to a hover, still loading the right leg, but adding a little bit more of a balance challenge. You decide what is right for you today. And then we're gonna plant the foot down, stand all the way up, grow nice and tall, big full body stretch here, and then go ahead, sit back into your chair squat, plant your hands on your thighs, you're gonna to start to bounce and you can go up and down. You can make it a really bouncy bounce, okay? Or you can make it more of a slow, calm bounce. Totally, de totally depends on what you're looking for and how you're feeling today. And you can maybe sit back more in your heels, okay? Or you can sit more in your toes and practice driving the knees forward. You can make the bounce look any way you want and feel any way you want, okay? If you're feeling like you really wanna move a little more vigorously for a second, you can go really quick and fast, right? Totally up to you. We'll just be here bouncing for a little bit, getting the heart rate up a bit, getting all the blood flowing nicely, and then you root down through the feet one more time. Stand up nice and tall. We're gonna swan dive forward, hinge those hips back as the arms come down. You're planting the palms down and stepping back into your plank. We're gonna drop now the right knee to the mat and lift the left leg up. And then we're visiting that screwdriver movement on the left side. So left hip, knee and foot rotate away from the right leg and then they rotate towards the right leg. And then when you're ready, you step that left foot forward in between your hands. This might be a place where you want your blocks. You're gonna start with both hands on the top thigh, maybe switch hands and do the opposite hand on top this time. And then you're driving the knee forward and pulling it back. Make sure the left heel isn't lifting up though, okay? So try to keep the left heel down on your mat even when you drive the knee forward. And then the next time you drive it forward, you pause. You're leaning over this front leg a bit. Arms go out to a T. We'll visit our arm circles here. 
So we really are getting all the major joints moving in all kinds of ways today. And then you can reverse directions. You can make your arm circle any speed you want. And then you're gonna plant your hands down on your blocks or on your mat. Tuck your right toes under, lift your right knee up. Now I'm keeping my torso glued on my left thigh as I bend my right knee and hinge or shift my hips back, right? My big toe pulls towards my face and then I rock forward, bend front knee, straight back leg. Okay, and so see if you can explore this shape in a way that works for you. It might look like very subtle, like not a big movement, or it might look a little more dramatic or bigger in your body. Just make it kind of work for you, okay? Try to keep the torso glued to the thigh though. That'll help with getting that hamstring stretch. And then we're gonna be in our runner's lunge and you can either start to drop the knee down and lift it up and use your blocks or the floor for support or you'll climb up your leg, bring your hands on this left thigh and drop the knee down, lift it up, okay? And use the leg for support or like I said on the other side, that third funny option, you can be dropping the knee down and lifting it up and that's another option as well. <laughs> and maybe like one or two more. And we'll drop that knee down, plant the hands down on your mat, and you're gonna extend this left leg all the way straight back and turn your body. So now your left foot is gonna come to the mat, your right hand, your right knee, and your right foot are all in a line, the left foot joins them. You're gonna turn your body open to the side and reach the left arm up. Feel free to take this uh, right leg and bring it behind you if you need more of a kickstand or keep it in line. And then I just want you to work on pulling your right side waist away from the floor, getting side body work going. And then your left foot is pushing into your mat. You're looking up towards your top hand and then down towards your bottom hand. Little more head movement. Great, and then we're gonna pivot back and turn back and bring the left knee in to meet the right. Do a couple of rock backs here just to kind of reset. Maybe you want to rock the hips back to the left and then back to the right. See how that feels. Rainbow it up a little bit. Get into the hips. Maybe if you wanna make this more of a circle or a rotation, you can do that. So always exploring. <laughs> And then, okay, I want you to tuck your toes under, lift your knees so you're in a hover, okay? And for both of these movements, your knees are going to be bent. And what you're gonna do is start to reach your hips up and back, keep the knees bent, reach your right hand towards your left foot. It might touch, it might not. And then rock forward, knee hover. Now hips go up and back, left hand towards right foot. Rock forward, knee hover. See if you can alternate. Okay, and we're kind of progressing that movement we did earlier in when we um, rocked in and out of child's pose on a single arm. So we did prep the body for it, <laughs> okay? You could always repeat that if this was a little too much load for you, okay? But it's opposite arm to opposite foot. Great, settle the knees down, untuck the toes, rock your hips back and forth a few times, or maybe just rest in a child's pose either one and then we're going to meet in a downward facing dog you can make your way there however it works for you and walk your hands now towards your feet at the back of the mat root down through the feet and start to roll the spine up we're back in a standing shape and now this is going to be a little different so i'm going to give you a few options okay if you're okay with the balance and the coordination of this, you won't hold on to the wall. If you need a little balance assistance, you'll hold on to the wall. So I'll show you this one first. The hands interlace behind the head, step forward with your right foot, drop your back knee any amount towards the floor and do a lunge. And then as you come up, turn and try to reach right elbow towards left knee. Step forward, back knee drops down. Okay, try to turn elbow towards knee. Okay, so you're gonna kind of walk down the mat and then you'll turn around and go the other way. So it's always opposite knee to opposite elbow. It doesn't matter if they touch or not. If you struggle with the balance of that, okay, 
we can do is um, set up, let me see if I have the right leg here, yeah. You can set up and hold the wall, so one hand is behind your head, you go into your lunge, and you can maybe do a few on one side like this, and then turn and do a few on the other side. So you're still gonna get that really great um, single leg strength, and still gonna get the contralateral coordination and the rotation, just get a little balance assistance, okay? So either option is great. You can be going up and down the mat or you can be holding on to the wall. And we'll meet back at the back of your mat when you're complete and just go ahead, reach the arms up, grow nice and tall, relax the arms down, and then drop your chin to your chest. You're gonna roll your spine down one vertebrae at a time and walk your hands out into your plank and then from plank, we're dropping down to our bellies. So if you need to drop the knees down, go ahead. If you can lower down from here, you can start to lower the body all the way to the floor. We'll reach the arms forward. You can rest your forehead down on your mat or a washcloth and gently rock the legs side to side, okay? So sometimes people really like um, to rest their head on a towel or something. So feel free to do that if you need to. And we're gently windshield wipe burning. <laughs> Funny way to say it, side to side with the legs. And then you can go ahead, settle the legs down. Tops of feet are going to start to press down into the floor. And I want you to see if you can gently scoop your tailbone under so your pubic bone is kind of pushing into the floor a bit. Arms come to 90 degree, like cactus position, goalpost arms. Forehead is down. So part one is a lift of the arms and a lowering of the arms. And then part two is a lift of the chest and the head and a lowering. And then part three is a lift of the legs. We'll do pointed toes. So see if you can move through these a few times, arms, chest and head, and then legs. We're gonna get all the different muscles in the posterior chain, the back of the body. Whoops, see if you can do one at a time. And then, we're gonna lift everything together. So arms, chest, head, legs, everything lifts, and then everything lowers. Let's do that maybe three to five times, depending on your breath and how quickly you're moving. And then on the last one, we're gonna hold for a few breaths. And then go ahead, when you settle down, turn your cheek um, and face your left hand, arms come out to a T, and gently dance the hips side to side. So see if you can shake that out, dance the hips a bit, shimmy, dance, shake, whatever words you like. And now the face is um, facing your left hand, you're gonna bend your left leg, lift the left leg up and reach the left big toe towards the floor behind you. Take a nice breath and then roll back to your front, turn the head, look at the right hand, bend the right knee, lift the right leg up, reach the toe towards the floor, it doesn't have to touch, and then reverse it. So we can go side to side here, just make sure that you turn the head so that you're facing the leg that's lifting, okay? And everyone's different, so you might play with uh, coming into this rotation and then holding and breathing, and that might feel best to you, or you might like to uh, do, how, do it how we started and just gently go side to side and maybe compare sides or explore a bit there. Nice job. Okay, we're planting the palms next to the chest, bent elbows, tucking the toes under. Let's play with our knee push-up all the way up to tabletop and then rock the hips back and rock the hips forward. We'll rock them over to the left side towards seven o'clock, rock forward, and then over towards the right side and forward. So see if you can go um, center and then over to each side a few times. Great, and then we got one last like active movement and we'll really wind it down. So come down back onto your forearms all right, and we are in a tabletop on the forearms, palms are flat. From here, you're gonna curl both toes under and lift the knees, step back with your left foot, step back with your right foot, step in with your right foot, 
step in with your left foot. And then we're gonna weave with the right foot, and then the left foot follows, the left foot comes in, and the right foot comes in. So see if you can start to play with this. If you need to drop the knees down in between each one, go for it. And if you'd rather just step one leg back and then step one leg in like this, that's also a great option, okay? So see how you're feeling at this point in the practice. This will be our last kind of activating or engaging movement. I think I got my legs mixed up, but as long as you're stepping back and stepping forward, you're gonna get all the great benefits of this. Okay, great, we'll settle the knees down. See if you can walk your hands in and send your hips back towards your heels for a second. We'll sit the hips down on the mat, swing the legs around, and just scooch towards the top of your mat so you have some space. We'll move through some rock and rolls here. So you can take your hands either on the front of the shins or interlace them behind the legs, either one, and you're gonna roll back and forth. We wanna try to make our rock and rolls as smooth and fluid as we can. So if you feel more like you're rolling on rocks as opposed to a free back massage, see if you can take a blanket or a towel and just place it um, along the length of your mat and that should help with any of the clunking um, that, or thudding that you might be experiencing. Okay, so we want it to try to be smooth and fluid. And then we'll come up and plant the feet, reach the arms forward, start to roll the spine down one vertebrae at a time and we're taking the arms nice and wide just kind of how we started really energetically extend out through those fingertips feet are about hips width apart and now you're lifting your right arm up crossing it over the body reaching your right hand towards your left hand and you can let your right hip lift up off the floor so it's this nice rotation here and then reverse it come back on your back open the right arm lift the left arm up cross it over, reach it past those right fingertips, and then come back to your other side. See if you can do one more per side. Great. And then we're gonna extend the right leg up towards the ceiling. See if you can just wave it in and out a few times. So even if you have a little knee bend, that's fine. Can just think of it as a leg wave, right? Inwards towards midline and then outwards. And then you'll cross your right ankle over your left thigh, move the right knee away from your face and let the legs topple to the left and back to center. Okay, and if you prefer to just kind of hang out in this twist here, you can do that, right? Or you can drop the legs and keep it a little more dynamic. Everyone kind of down regulates a little differently. so. Some of you are gonna to wanna to just hold and breathe here. Uh, there's like a little gentle movement and that helps them calm down. And then you'll unwind, reach the left leg up. See if you can visit the leg wave in and out. And then cross the left ankle over the right thigh. Keep driving the left knee away from your face. The legs will drop to the right and back to center. And same thing, if you like to keep this um, more movement-based, more movement-oriented, you can let them topple and come back to center. Or if you'd rather let this be more stationary, just let the legs fall to one side and take some restful breaths. And then see if you can just come into a comfortable shape. We'll be here for just a few moments. So uh, if you wanna just relax your legs along, you can do that, or maybe you'd rather butterfly pose or any comfortable shape, sometimes knees in, feet out works. Rest the palms somewhere easy and effortless, maybe making contact with the body. Allow the eyes to soften or flutter close. Soften the muscles in the face and unhinge the jaw. Invite any tension or tightness in the neck, the chest, or the belly to soften and release. Take a few moments of openness, receptivity. 
few moments to integrate all that great movement we just did. And maybe start to wiggle fingers and toes, gently rock the head side to side. If you have more time today, I highly recommend staying here a little longer and taking more time to rest and down regulate. If you are like me and have to get up to go to the next thing, start to make some larger movements, maybe take a full body stretch. Maybe hug the knees in, anything that'll feel good. Roll over to one side and make your way on up. Let's just come together, virtually reach the arms up, grow nice and tall, float the hands together at heart center, and we'll bow forward in gratitude. And thank you all so much for joining. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope that was energizing and also felt really good at the same time. Always here if you have any questions.